Welcome back, this is How to Souls. My name is Rach and today we're gonna to look at how to get to Tauros Demon without wasting any Estes. So this early in the game, upgrading your Estes requires humanity, which is not exactly plentiful. So we're gonna use every single heal that we have in order to progress on this difficult boss. Ball Ache Avenue coming up just ahead can put a lot of new players off. This run back can get really frustrating, especially if you're dying to the boss just as you are figuring out the mechanics. So today I'm going to show you how to take this nice and slow. <laughs> Excuse me. So today I'm going to show you how to take this nice and slow so that you can get back to the boss and concentrate on using your heals there instead of before them. So starting from the bonfire, the easiest and most importantly, the safest way. Unfortunately, it's not the fastest, but it will make sure that you get to Taro's Demon with all of your heals, having wasted none of them. And you can concentrate on having all of them for the boss fight. So firstly, you want to pull this guy that's just on the right on the stairs. Pull him back into the bonfire room to make sure that you don't attract the attention of the crossbowman. Then you want to rush the crossbowman two hand your weapon if you can, and just try and take him down as quick as possible. Hopefully you can do it within one stamina bar. Next, this guy down below will get aggroed, so he'll come up. You wanna make sure you take your time, do not progress until you've taken him out too. Okay, with three hollows down, now it's time to proceed through what we have affectionately called Ball Ache Avenue. So you've got these guys over there that are throwing fire bombs down at you. So the way that I like to deal with um, the three hollows in the room up ahead is that I like to wait for the fire bomb, run to the end, pause at the door, and then run back. Okay, so we've managed to pull two of the three. They are being funneled through this bridge though. So you want to take them out. Use the space behind you, however, be careful not to roll off the edge. Just back off and you can take those two out. So now there's just one guy left in the room ahead. So when it's all clear, you can run over to him and you've got a nice big room to fight him in. If you haven't already seen my video on parrying, clearly I should watch it. If you haven't already seen my video on parrying, then you can absolutely go and watch that. It does make these little hollows a little bit more fun to deal with. And you can use this as an opportunity to learn just while the bonfire is right there. Okay, once you get to this bit, you are going to want to enter this house on the right hand side. Because if you don't, again, this guy will sneak up behind you and ruin your life while you're progressing on the next guy. So just take him out. There's some treasure in the house that you can grab if you haven't done already. There is another guy in there though, so be aware. You'll want to take him out too. When you're ready to move on, you'll want to go up these stairs. Now, the next three hollows are a little trickier to deal with. The guy in the back throws firebombs and the other two have different weapons and they can very easily gang up on you. So I recommend funneling them through these stairs here, trying to take them on one at a time. If you can leave the firebomb guy in the back, that's for the best, but this guy has decided he wants to come and say hello. So. Just take it slowly and surely. You can use these stairs, hit a couple of times and then back off. Yeah, this is one of the guys throwing the firebombs for some reason he's fallen down. It can happen, but just keeping your cool, not panicking, using the environment to your advantage, like for example with these stairs. A lot of the time when an enemy is above you, um, their attack can sweep over your head if you just use, if you are lower than them. So those guys are fine. You don't have to worry about those guys up there. They can't hit you. Now when we get to this part, there is a crossbowman at the top of this tower. So you'll want to take the time to go up here because if you don't, you can get shot in the back while you're fighting the next guys. Again, it's all these little things that you might think, oh, I'll just skip him and I'll just run, but it can actually just get you killed on the way and it'll just make you more frustrated. Trust me, I've been there many, many times. Okay, if you have the master key, or if you find the key later on, you can enter this room and you get the gold pine resin, which is pretty cool. Um, but I actually recommend new players don't start with the master key, but if you picked the thief and you know, and if you can't help it, you may as well go in there and get the treasure. There is nothing to worry about in there. Just make sure you exit back via this door 
instead of jumping off here. Jumping off here is probably not the best idea. So although you can, doesn't mean you should. Just go back out the way that you came. Okay, so we're back here. We've taken out the crosswomen at the top of the tower. So now we just have three hollows down here. All three of them have shields. Now, oh, perfect. Our first guy is making his way up because we pulled him while we were open, opening the treasure chest. So that's, that's a legit, that's a tactic. He's got a spear. So there are two ways you can deal with him. You can try and circle around behind him. I recommend pulling him back here just so you have plenty of space to deal with him. You can try and circle behind him for a backstab. Uh, remember, you can only backstab if your shield is lowered. Centered behind him and you press R1 to backstab him. You can kick. You can kick his shield away and then attack him while he is open. Or you can parry him. So whatever way that you're comfortable with, uh, kicking and parrying are a little bit more difficult. I admit I took some chip damage there, but you'll forgive me for that, right? So that was a, it was a partial parry because I was slightly off with my timing. Okay, spear bro is down. That leaves two sword bros. So I do recommend just taking this slow, trying to pull just one of them. So you can do this just by edge and close down until one of them comes for you. If you pull two, don't panic again. Just use the environment. Try and get them like in a, in a straight line. You don't want to fight them side by side because they can just, they can surround you. You always want to have the area behind you free in case you need to just quickly roll back basically. I think the reason that this sort of run back to this boss is so tricky and it does cause a lot of people to get frustrated and quit is that they just throw so much at you so early and it really forces you to learn some tricks like for example uh, with backstabbing, with um, body pulling, just taking things super slow. Um, I really do think this area does teach you that sometimes the fastest way is the slowest way. So there we go, just gave that guy a little backstab. Um, this isn't my first time through here because I did just record a video uh, about partying. Because uh, I'm, I'm, you know, it's a new channel, I'm trying to, you know, save some time. Uh, so this guy that I've just killed there, he does roll a fire barrel at you. So what you want to do, so you want to tease this barrel by running up to this point and immediately run back as soon as you see him let the battle loose. And then once that's out of the way, you're free to deal with him. Now you'll notice we have skipped the Black Knight at the bottom here. You really don't need to worry about fighting him. At worst, you can get an upgrade item that you really don't need at this part of the game. At best, he might give you a sword that you can't even equip yet with your low stats. It does allow you to pick up the blue tear stone ring behind him, which can actually save your life. So if you're feeling ballsy and you're really like, no, I must do this super early, I do recommend you watch my video about partying. Uh, because it really does make a difference with 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 taking him down. With him down, that really was your last obstacle. You're free to now go up the stairs unhindered. Nice and easy. And you will probably find, because you have gotten here without using any heals, I did take a tiny little bit of chip damage, but, you know, I wouldn't heal for that anyway. I wouldn't recommend wasting an Estus unless you're going to get a whole Estus out of it, you know? Here's a little free tip for you. If you hit this barrel on the end here, it has a crystal lizard inside. So if you make sure you get him targeted, as long as you hit him like once a second or something like that, once every couple seconds, he won't disappear and you can get the upgrade materials from him. So, you know, I don't know if you do end up getting that Black Knight down and he drops a Black Knight sword, it's a pretty good sword. So you can use that Twinkling Titanite that the crystal lizard drops you that I am um, very disrespectfully playing with uh, to upgrade that sword. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so good luck with Tauros. I am going to leave you here because I think, you know, the bosses are the best part about this game. So enjoy learning how to beat Tauros. If you are having some trouble with him, here's a video that you can watch where I talk about the easiest way to take down the Tauros demon. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do subscribe for more videos and we'll see you in the next one.